Today's video is sponsored by Dashlane. The noise of the diesel engines even walking up this ramp here is quite something. I don't even know if you can hear me over the din. But two diesel engines are going to be taking us all the way north up to Seattle over the next 36 hours. It's going to be an epic trip. Today's video begins at Los Angeles Union Station. This was the last great railway station to be completed in the United States, opening in 1939, and is a wonderful example of Art Deco and Mission Revival architecture. Four of Amtrak's longest distance trains start or finish their journeys here. The Sunset Limited to New Orleans, the Texas Eagle and Southwest Chief to Chicago, and our journey, the Coast Starlight to Seattle. LA Union is one of my favorite places to wait for a train, and there are lots of small architectural details to marvel at. The wooden beams in the ceiling here are actually made of steel and not wood. Anyway, onto the journey itself. If you're sensible, you'll have booked online long ago to get the lowest price. You can either print your ticket at home or use the quick track machine if, like me, you prefer a solid card ticket you can keep as a souvenir. Baggage checking can also be done at the manned Amtrak kiosks, much like an airport. Sleeper car passengers get access to the Metropolitan Lounge. Now, there's a great refurbished Metropolitan Lounge in Chicago, but sadly the example in LA is rather unloved. It's a bit like time traveling to the 1990s. Soft drinks, pastries and coffee are all available. It will get busy. All sleeper car passengers get access to use this place, as well as some Amtrak Rewards members, so arrive early if you want a good seat. Okay, so it's 9.30 and time to board the Coast Starlight. It's train number 14 off track 11A. Now, you can actually pay for a red cap to take you from the lounge all the way to the train with all of your luggage and they will help you board the train, but I'm able-bodied, I can do this myself and I save myself a few dollars as well. The Coast Starlight consists of numerous double-decker superliner sleeper cars seated cars, a dining car, and a lounge car. There's also a baggage car where your checked bags go. Our train today is headed by two General Electric P42 DC locomotives. They're capable of over 100 miles an hour, but our sleeper car trip won't see high speeds. We top out at 79 miles per hour, but average only 40 miles an hour over the entire trip. After checking in with the sleeper car attendant, it's upstairs where my Amtrak Superliner roomette is located. This is the lowest category of sleeper accommodation available. I paid $406 for my ticket one way. All sleeper car fares come with all-inclusive meals and non-alcoholic drinks. Roomettes are designed for two occupants, but you can, like me, book for solo occupancy. 
unlike many European trains, sharing with strangers is not permitted. If you have bags you don't want to check, there are huge baggage racks on the lower level, which will take most sizes of suitcase. Today's video sponsor is Dashlane. Dashlane is a vital tool for me. I travel about a hundred times a year and it cuts the time and hassle of booking tickets and helps me do it way more securely. It manages all my passwords, so I don't need to keep track of each one. Dashlane also suggests and remembers new super secure complex passwords unique to each website. It has a secure autofill feature which remembers all your personal information, even your passport number if you like, on both desktop and mobile. And even if you don't have my ridiculous travel habit, you'll appreciate the security benefits. There's a VPN which stops third parties stealing your information over Wi-Fi, and with the VPN enabled, you can access content that would otherwise be blocked. Go to dashlane.com slash Paul for a special offer to get Dashlane for free on your first device. Use code Paul to get it on your second device too, and never forget a password again. The Coast Starlight departs promptly at 10 past 10 in the morning and for the first portion of the trip follows the LA River. I'm one of the people who played Grand Theft Auto 5 before ever visiting downtown LA, so seeing locations from Los Santos in real life is a bit surreal. I'm sure I've driven these tracks and the riverbed many times in a stolen pickup truck. As we leave LA, heading north, let's reflect on the scale of today's journey. The Coast Starlight covers 1,377 miles across 34 hours and 50 minutes of travel, arriving into Seattle at 9 p.m. the following day. The first stop on our journey is an example of a rarity in the US. Unlike in Europe, most major airports don't have a proper heavy rail connection. Burbank Airport South is just one of a handful, although the canopy still sports the old name of Bob Hope. Let's have a closer look at the roomette. There's just me in here. Uh, I've got solar occupancy of this uh, particular roomette, so I'm using this kind of area instead of steps for the top bunk, just to store some of my stuff. If there was somebody else in here with me, uh, this would obviously have to go into the baggage compartment, which I showed you earlier on, which is downstairs in this sleeper car. Let's have a quick look at these controls here. This is your reading lamp which only has on or off settings. This music control I don't think has probably worked since the 90s. It's never worked any time I've been on Amtrak and I don't really know what it's for anymore. This here is how you would summon the attendant if you needed something. Um, you would tend to do that at night when you want your bed made up uh, in the roomette here. And this is the light switch which has on, off and night settings. If we look at the other seat here, the controls are slightly different. This is the temperature dial here, which guides the air conditioning, which you see up here. You can close or open the vents like so. Let's just close it a little there, otherwise I'll get too cold. To be honest, I've never had this dial anything other than on the coolest setting. Uh, Amtrak trains can get pretty warm even in the winter. I did the Empire Builder from Portland to Chicago and it was warm the whole way in the cabin. Uh, this here is your uh, plug socket, which works. And there's also another reading lamp you can see here. 
Up here are some face towels, which you'll need uh, if you go for a wash or a shower, which I'll show you a bit later on. And this is where you'd hang uh, your clothes. Personally, I just travel in uh, t-shirts and shorts, so I'm not gonna be needing those today. But if you had a suit or something bulky, there's also this little belt that stretches across here that you could lock in and stop the suit from swaying, I guess, over here. Finally, you've got a couple of coat hooks, one here and one here. And last but not least, a mirror. Just here, we've also got a table which folds out like this. You'll probably notice this is not the most sturdy table. It's at a little bit of an angle to the horizontal. Let's just pop our water on there. Oh, it just about stays there, I guess. And uh, yes, there's a bottle of water for me and another for my non-existent roommate. Uh, so I've got two bottles of water and they're replenished every day on Amtrak. Finally, each car is provided with uh, customer safety instructions, uh, some promotional credit card thing, and also, very handily, a map of our route all the way from Los Angeles across the coast and heading north into Oregon and Washington up to Seattle. There's also a lock, but it's only on the inside. It does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not using one of these before, but you simply release and reattach like that. And so that's it, that's what you get in a roomette. There's just me in here today, so uh, it's cozy without being cramped. I've never tried this with two people in it. If you are doing that, uh, you've probably spotted there's not an awful lot of place to leave your bags. Um, so I recommend that you do leave them downstairs, as I said earlier. Amtrak is really safe. Most sleeper cars in most developed countries are really safe these days. Uh, I personally don't mind at all leaving my stuff uh, down in that baggage compartment. It's just that it's just me here. I prefer to have it with me. The sleeper car is over two levels. There are four toilets in the car. The toilets themselves have a slightly weird design. If you're standing, it's not entirely clear where the flush is and is out of your field of view. Thank me later for this one because the first time I used an Amtrak toilet, it took me a while to find. If you're disabled, by the way, the disabled room on the lower level comes with a less than ideal personal lavatory and curtain arrangement. On the upper level, free coffee is available, as well as juice and bottled water. Access between cars is only on the upper level. Dining on Amtrak is a highlight. Not really for the food, but the fact that lunch and dinner is done in sittings and you are sat communally to fill tables. As a solo traveller, you'll likely sit with a dozen or more different people across the two days. Amtrak stops in many rural places, so dining is an opportunity to speak to lots of different Americans who don't necessarily live in towns or cities. Sleeper car passengers don't need to pay for their meals. Instead, you fill out a small form with your details and you can have whatever you like, but tipping is the norm. So bring plenty of ones and twos on the trip to tip after every meal. After Santa Barbara, the route becomes coastal and it's a good time to check out the observation car or the lounge car. All passengers, seated or sleeper, have access here, but there always seems to be a spare seat.
Downstairs is a lower level lounge with poorer views, but a bar which sells all sorts of drinks, snacks and alcohol. Anything bought from here must be paid for, even if you're a sleeper car customer. Something to watch out for inland is Vandenberg Air Force Base. The train skirts the edge of the site and it's possible to see the launch pad for various vehicles. SpaceX, Elon Musk's space exploration company, uses some of these facilities. The Pacific Surfliner train terminates at San Luis Obispo and some of its carriages can be seen as we approach. This is the first smoke stop on the route. Baggage can be checked here, so there's an extended stop. You can't smoke on the train, so these stops are an opportunity for a cigarette or, if you're more sensible, just an opportunity to stretch your legs and feel some fresh air. After we leave San Luis Obispo, the scenery turns hilly as we cut through the mountains. There are plenty of curves giving an opportunity to spot the front and back of the train from the train windows. It's worth remembering that this railway was built in the 19th century, by hand and without sophisticated modern techniques. I wonder how much dynamite was used to blast our way through the entire route of the Coast Starlight. Travelling by train in the USA is fascinating. The train takes routes through small towns and you get to see so many things you'll miss if you cheat and take the plane. After a delicious rare steak and chocolate pudding, the sun sets as we approach the Bay Area. Salinas is another smoke stop. It's lovely and cool with the sun out of the way. I really recommend getting the air on your face and your feet on the ground at every opportunity with each smoke stop.
The darkness brings calm to the train. Big cities like San Jose and Oakland pass without a fuss. And if you're eagle-eyed, you'll even spot the train riding down the middle of the street in Oakland. Tracks share the road on Embarcadero West for several blocks. By this time it was late, so time to ask the attendant to make up the bed, which is very comfortable by the way, and get under the covers. One of the things I love to do before sleeping on Amtrak is to turn off all the lights and keep the curtains open so I can see all the lights pass and hear and feel the train move steadily onward. On the morning of day two, I'm awake with the dawn as we pass northwards through North California. We're over the border into Oregon in the blink of an eye, and it's time for a free coffee and a shower. Amtrak showers are surprisingly reliable in my experience. They're on the lower level of each sleeper car and toiletries and towels are provided. Breakfast is gloriously unhealthy, and yes, you can ask for extra sausage and all the sides you want, by the way. There's no extra charge. If you're a keen photographer, it's worth bearing in mind the rear carriage door has a window you can shoot through to look backwards down the track. Other sleeper accommodations are available. This is an Amtrak room which comfortably sleeps too and is quite a bit more expensive than my little roomette. The scenery on the second day is gorgeous and a contrast to the first day. It's full of green mountains and evergreen trees. Amtrak is a simply wonderful way to see the United States. Sit back with a coffee or a beer and watch thousands of miles of big country slip by. It's a great American institution. I really recommend getting a sleeper car accommodation by the way, even if it's just a roomette. Some people do this entire journey in the seats, and in my view it's a false economy. There's no access to a shower for seated passengers, so it can get a bit smelly on long distance trips, and you'll have to pay extra for all of your food. If you're a tourist, save up, and I promise you the extra expense of a roomette is worth it.
By mid-afternoon, we're well into Oregon and approaching Portland. A city renowned for its progressive politics, it's a pleasant city with good transport and it's easy to walk. Probably my favorite one to visit as a tourist in the US. However, reminders that the American dream doesn't work out for everyone are rife in Portland and not even the clinically sealed windows of my sleeper car can hide this reality. If Portland is your destination, be safe this time to gather all of your personal belongings around your seat. If you have a luggage rack and the seat back in front of you in preparation of exiting the train today. If you have checked baggage to Portland, please listen closely. Checked baggage to Portland, please go inside the station to the baggage room to claim your items approximately 10 minutes after arrival. Any through in connections? Portland Union Station lies on the west bank of the Williamette River, which we just crossed on the famous steel bridge. Amtrak's Cascade service departs from here to Vancouver in Canada twice a day, and the Empire Builder, which you may remember I made a video of a couple of years back, also leaves every afternoon for Chicago. The extended smoke stop here means I can get a good look at the Cascades train. I've not taken this yet, but I'm interested to see what it's like. The carriages do look a bit odd, that's because they're articulated Talgo carriages from Spain. The first stop out of Oregon is Vancouver, Washington. It's not the Vancouver I want. My final destination is Vancouver, Canada, but as there's no Cascades connection available for me this late in the day, I'll be on a three-way bus for the last leg. Darkness falls quickly, and we're soon in Seattle at King Street Station. Thanks so much, cheers. Bye-bye. The bus waits at the front of the station and it's time to connect with the train. If the train is late, the bus will wait. From here, it is just two hours in the bus, over the land border and into Vancouver. And that's it. That's the end of this trip. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and will subscribe for more just like this. Amtrak's long distance services are under threat. Please use them as much as you can because they won't be around in this guise forever. Last but not least, I'd like to say a big thanks to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to go to dashlane.com slash paul for a special offer to get Dashlane for free for your first device. Use code paul to get it on your second device too, and never forget a password again.